Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about geologic time. So in this video we're going to be focusing on what is the evidence for the age of the earth and this is going to correspond to section 9.9 .9 of your textbook. So when the early geologists started going out uh, it became clear relatively quickly that the age of the earth may well be a lot older than they had assumed. So initially, when these early geologists went out, they were using a biblical view for the age of the earth. And so if you take the Bible and you manage to calculate the ages of the people in the Bible and you add them all together, essentially the Bible would suggest that the earth was created about 6,000 or so years ago. Now, when these early geologists started going out and looking at the sequences of rocks that were in front of them, they relatively quickly came to the conclusion that the amount of sediment that would have to accumulate to produce these layers of rock would have taken hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years to produce. So you can see straight away there's a bit of a problem. So how did these early geologists start to experiment to see if they could work out you know, what the age of the Earth actually was? So there were several different techniques that were tried. Uh, the earliest technique involved taking uh, metal spheres and melting them. And so uh, what the, the idea was is if you had a metal sphere of a set diameter and you melted it and then you saw how long the metal took to cool back down, having melted and solidify, that would give you some idea of how long it would have taken the earth to form. There were also other attempts to calculate the age of the earth using the salinity of the ocean, so how salty is seawater. So that model went and said, okay, we know how saline seawater is, and we know that the salt which is going into the oceans is being contributed from rivers which are draining the continents. And so the, the calculation was relatively simple. They said, right, we know this much salt is coming into the oceans every day, and we know the total salinity of the oceans, so all we have to do is calculate how long it would have taken the oceans to reach the salinity that we can see today using the amount of salt being added to the oceans via rivers. Now, these particular techniques aren't actually going to give you an accurate answer, but nevertheless, these were geologists trying to think of methods that would allow them to accurately calculate the age of the Earth. And these methods produced quite a broad range of numbers, ranging everywhere from a few hundred thousand years up to about two billion years. So you can see that, you know, depending on which technique you were using and, you know, and, uh, and the values you used uh, to uh, to produce your calculations, you will end up with quite a broad range of possible ages for the Earth. So yes, they weren't getting accurate data, but they were at least trying to come up with a method that would allow them to produce an accurate age for the Earth. So the first thing we need to think about is what evidence uh, exists that the Earth's history is actually not short. So remember, a biblical view puts the age of the earth at about 6,000 years. So if we look at tree rings, we can actually produce a, a sequence of tree rings that gives us a dating record that goes back about 9,000 years. And so this tree ring record obviously is longer than the age range uh, which is predicted by the Bible. We can also look at ice cores taken from areas of the Earth which have been frozen for long periods of time. So we're thinking about Antarctica or the Arctic. And so these ice cores, as you can see, have lots and lots of bands in them. And these bands are seasonal in origin. And so each one of these couplets, these lighter, darker couplets, represents one year of uh, ice development. And so when you look at these ice cores, you can see hundreds of thousands of years of ice being deposited to produce the ice sheets that we see in areas now like Antarctica. So once again, this is relatively simple evidence that clearly shows that the Earth is a lot older than people originally thought. So we can also look at lake sediments. So this particular set of lake sediments are from a glacial lake and they have a very distinctive light dark pattern, don't they? You can see them going light dark, light dark, light dark. So each one of these light dark layers is referred to a couplet, is referred to as a couplet, and each of these couplets is given a special term which we refer to as a varve. So the light layer represents the summer and the dark layer represents the fall and winter. 
And so each of these layers combined is essentially one year's worth of sediment accumulation. And once again, when you go into uh, lakes and you collect sediment from the bottom of the lakes and you look at the core, you will see once again that it, you know, these uh, sediment cores show thousands and thousands of years of sediment accumulation, once again, in excess of the age which you would expect if you took a biblical view. We can also uh, use the rates of plate motion to give us some idea about how the about how old the Earth could be. So if we think of the Atlantic, well, we know that uh, North America and Europe are moving away from each other. We have scientific evidence of this. So because they're moving away from each other, we can say, well, we can reverse that process and we can move them back towards each other. And so if we were to move the continents back towards each other and then allow them to move apart from each other again how long would it take for the atlantic to reach the size that it is now and the answer to that is about 252 million years give or take a little bit and so once again this is another clear indicator the earth must be a lot older than geologists originally thought now this is very very important it's very, very important because it helps to allow processes like plate tectonics to take place. Because as we know, plate tectonics requires the continents to be constantly moving across the surface of the Earth. But the continents aren't moving quickly. They move pretty slowly. And so in order for a continent to eventually move quite a large distance, it's going to require a substantial amount of time. So the idea the Earth is extremely old is essential to the theory of plate tectonics. Now, it's also essential to the theory of evolution. So at the same time that the geologic timescale was being produced in the early to mid 19th century, you also had Charles Darwin uh, producing the ideas for and eventually publishing his book on the origin of species, which, of course, was the, the first look at evolution. So... Um, Evolution, uh, if it wants to function correctly, has to have a large period of time to work it. And this is because evolution is to some degree a somewhat random process. And so what happens is, is over time you have to have certain traits being selected. Those traits will become more and more dominant in the population. And maybe those traits will be successful or maybe they will not be successful. So over time, evolution will steadily cause organisms to become more and more adapted to their specific environments. Now, this is not a fast process once again. And so having an Earth that's very, very old gives you sufficient time to allow evolution to take place. If, however, you take a viewpoint uh, of the Earth being relatively young, about 6,000 years old, well, then that's nowhere near enough time for evolution to function correctly. And so the idea the Earth is very, very old is helpful for a whole range of reasons. It helps to explain the tectonic processes or, that we can see, and it also helps to uh, explain evolution. Now, the next question is, where does the age of the Earth actually come from? Well, the early age for the Earth comes from meteorites, and most accurately, a type of meteorite called a chondrite. Now, chondrites are the most common form of meteorite in the solar system, and because of the most common form of meteorite, we can say with relative certainty that they, are, they will make up the bulk of the material that was used to build the Earth. So the Earth formed essentially through a, through a process of accretion, lots and lots of meteorites joining together, eventually becoming a larger and larger mass, which re eventually reaches the size of the modern day Earth. Now, when we look at meteorites and we date them, we get an age of 4.55 billion years. So in the chondrites, we actually have uh, a couple of different types of uh, structure. One of them is called a chondral, and chondrules tend to be spherical in shape, and you can kind of see one right here. And when we date chondrules, they give us an age of about 4.54 billion years old. Uh, 
Now, another thing that occurs within chondrites are things called CAIs or calcium aluminum inclusions. And these, as the name suggests, are blobs of calcium aluminium metal, uh, which are contained within the meteorite. Now, if we radiometrically day date these CAIs, they give us an age of about 4.55 billion years. And so what we can see uh, using this dating evidence is that the meteorites that went to form the Earth formed about 4.55 billion years ago. And so we need to think of these meteorites as essentially the bricks in the wall that went to build the Earth. And so the age of these meteorites gives us the maximum possible age for the Earth. And so the, age, the maximum age for the Earth is set at 4.55 billion years old. Now, we can also get other evidence that shows us that the Earth is relatively old from other parts of the solar system. So if we look at the moon, we can date the samples that have been brought back by Apollo missions, and they date the surface of the moon to 4.5 billion years ago. Now, for various reasons, we know that the moon probably formed in response to the Earth being hit by another planet, which would have been a about the size of Mars, it was called Thea. And when Thea struck the Earth, it caused a large portion of the Earth's rocks and magma to be blasted uh, into space. And eventually that material that got thrown into space uh, went and joined together so and ended up forming the moon. And we know the moon formed 4.5 billion years ago. So obviously because we know the moon formed 4.5 billion years ago and we know the moon formed from material that once made up the earth, well that means the earth must therefore have been there before the moon and so the earth has to be older than 4.5 billion years. And of course this agrees quite nicely with the age which we get from the meteorites. We can also look at the oldest rocks on Earth to give us some idea about what's been going on with the Earth. Now, if we look at just the rocks themselves, we find that the oldest rocks date to about 3.9 to 4 billion years in age. And the oldest rock on the surface of the Earth is called the Acastanites, and it's part of uh, a region of Canada, which we refer to as the Superior Province. Now, if we look at just grain, so we, uh, if we go to some parts of the world, and the most uh, important part is an area of Australia called uh, the Jack Hills area, um, there's a layer of sandstone in a sequence of rocks that occurs there that contains abundant zircons. And some of these zircons, when they were dated, were found to have an age of 4.3 billion years old. So these zircons essentially represent old rocks which have been weathered, releasing the zircons that were then incorporated into the younger sandstone. And so the presence of these uh, zircon crystals shows us that the Earth must have had a solid crust at least by about 4.3 billion years ago. So we can see that there's abundant evidence that quite clearly shows that the Earth isn't just old, it's extremely old and it dates to about 4.55 billion years old in total and this is you know this is great when it comes to the theory of plate tectonics and when it comes to evolution because this kind of age makes sure there is plenty of time to allow the processes that we would predict would occur to actually happen so the final piece of evidence that we can use to try and gauge the age of the earth comes from astronomical observations. So what we can do is we can look at the age of the universe and we can look at the age of the solar system and we can say, right, do the ages that we have for these particular systems fit with our uh, age for the Earth? So in the case of the universe, we believe the universe dates back about 13.8 billion years. So the solar system itself is actually a relatively young system when compared to the universe as a whole. Now, in terms of the solar system itself, we believe the solar system started forming about 4.57 billion years ago. So as you can see, it, you know, the solar system is a little bit older than the Earth, but the Earth started forming relatively soon after the solar system began to uh, form. 
And so this uh, similarity in the age of the solar system and the age of the Earth is what we would expect uh, if we were going for a model of Earth evolution based on accretion, where we have meteorites sticking together to form larger and larger planets over time. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good day.